All right, continuing our modifications for a two-player game. This is a popular one that students always ask about. They don't want the player to fire endlessly. They want them to have a little self-control, so give the player some ammunition. So here's how we do it for player one. In the create event for player one, let's give them a variable. I'll call it ammo, and you're asked to set it to 10. So there we go, set to 10. Now the use of the ammo variable is simple. Every time they fire, you should make sure they actually have some ammo. And then when they do fire, you can take the ammo down. So when they press the Q key to fire, we're just firing. That's what we don't want to do. We're going to sneak in a little bit here. If ammo is greater then zero, which means they have some. Then they're firing their ball called Bob. And ammo should go down by one. Ammo equals ammo minus one. Let's take that green line out. And that's it. That should control their ammo. Now another part of this was to draw the ammo on the screen. I already have the draw stuff variable there, so this should be fast and easy. Let's just sneak another line right in here for player one. Draw text. I'll draw it at the same place. I'll just go a little bit below. Ammo. Okay, remember. We're inside the player. Player has an ammo variable. Now I know I'm going to be doing the same thing for player two as well. So I may as well, while I'm here, also do player twos. So that should be showing up. And you know what? I'm going to be adventurous here. I'm going to do player twos at the same time. So create, just repeating everything I did for player one there. Ammo was 10. When they press the control key to fire, I'll ask a quick question. If ammo is bigger than zero. I didn't have a sound in this one. I think that's okay. Ammo is ammo minus one. And now if we test this, each player is only going to be able to fire 10 times. Every time they fire, yes, they have more than zero, but ammo starts to drop slowly, and then eventually, no more firing for them. Let's give this a test and see if all what we added didn't mess up the program. So. Oh, I already see a little problem there. I've drawn the hit point line out, but I'm definitely not able to fire anymore, so ammo is working. Player one is ammo's working okay. So I'll just go back and fix that draw there. What did I mess up right there? I copy pasted, and that's the danger of copy pasting, is it's very easy to make that kind of mistake. Sometimes it's just better to type it out again. Odds are you'll type it out right. Okay, that's it. Let's trust that that'll work. Now the next one they wanted you to add here was make a new object in the room called ammo box. The idea is we can put some in the room. When the players pick up the ammo box, they get maybe 10 more shots. So let's quickly grab a sprite for this. Create sprite. Sprite ammo box. Let's see here what would be good. Ah, good enough there. The lightning. Make the object. And now let's handle when the player hits it. So when player one collides with an ammo box,
we can destroy the ammo box. And we can give the player some ammo. Ammo equals ammo plus 10. We'll basically do the same thing with player 2. So I'll do a little copy-paste. Player 2 collides with ammo box. Destroy the ammo box plus 10. Of course, you add a couple sounds in there. It makes it a bit more exciting as well. To test quickly, let's just slap some ammo boxes inside the room. Okay, looks good. And then the firing still works. Perfect. Now one thing you notice here is the game reset, but ammo stayed. We hadn't had ammo in our game yet. So let's just quickly go back and we'll make sure the ammo goes back to 10 as well. So that was all in the players being hit by the ball. We had done all this stuff. Put the ammo back to 10 as well. Or if you don't care, you just leave it at whatever it's at. Ammo 10, ammo 10. And the same thing for player 2. So you'll notice in this program there's obviously a lot of sort of doubling up of code. Since the two players pretty well behave the same. And that should fix our ammo problem. Now, of course, any program, you know, those ammo boxes will run out. We need a way for those ammo boxes to be reproduced. And so that's why we're going to add a new object in the room called producer. And the producer will shoot out ammo boxes. And the ammo boxes, when they hit the wall, will stop. And that way there's a constant supply of ammunition being spit out into the room. So let's make this object called the producer. Now the nice thing about the producer is we don't have to give it a sprite. I'm just going to go object, create object, OBJ, producer. It's just going to be invisible there, right? No drawing. But what I will do with it is I'll use its step event to randomly decide to spit out an ammo box. So we've seen this code a few times now. The producer step 30 times a second. Pick a random number. Depends how often you want this stuff to come out. You can do stuff like equals 1. Maybe you want to do if it's less than 5, less than 3, less than 2. You fiddle with the program, right? decide what your odds want to be and if it does pick the right number then let's make ourselves an ammo box I'll just call it triple A instance create XY object ammo box I don't need this thing to move too fast and the direction of it you're asked to just make it random so I, random range, 0 to 359. Okay, so it spits out, and just you don't know which way it's going to go. So it's very fair to all the players. Now to test this out, you have to put the producer in the room. Room, producer, and what I'll do is I'll put it right in the middle of the room to be fair. And let's give it a little test. And just sit and wait for a second here. And there they go. Now, of course, the way they're coded, they're just leaving the room. That'll be the last little thing we do here, is we'll make it so that they don't leave the room, that they actually stay when they hit the wall. So the last thing here with the ammo box is collides with the wall. Let's just put a little bit of code. 
speed is zero. Okay, and that's really it. I'm not even going to test that because I know that'll work. Now, that's pretty well it. If you wanted to keep building on the two-player game, and we will actually go back to it and add a little on later on to it. But, you know, you want to add health packs, things that give you life, etc., like you did in the Get the Ghost game. You know, I'm confident that you're learning those skills, that you can add that stuff in yourself. Thanks for watching. Hopefully that went smoothly for you. If not, go back, replay the video a little slower, right? Practice this stuff in your own little game files. Thanks for watching. See you in the next lesson.